Hey, hey, it's Dr. Glenn Livingston, author of Never Binge Again, here with a quick story to help you stop overeating, stop binge eating, and reprogram yourself to think like a permanently thin person on the food plan of your choice. When I was a boy, I had the most wonderful little dog named Pepper. She was a miniature schnauzer, and what was really cool about her, besides the fact that she was a lap dog and really sweet, was that she would stay wherever you put her without complaining. So you could put her in the closet and she would stay there without making a noise. You could put her underneath the bed. You could put her even on top of the refrigerator and she would stay there without making a noise. She was just that kind of dog. And being a devious nine-year-old little boy, I had the idea along with my sister to play a game called hide and go seek with the dog. And the way that that worked was I would hide the dog someplace in the house and my sister had a certain amount of time to be able to find her. She wasn't allowed to call her. And if she could find the dog by the time that she counted to 50, then that was an out. But if I got past 50, then that was a single. If I got past 100, that was a double, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We had a baseball scoring system. And one time um, we were playing hide and go seek with the dog and everything was going along fine. And we were both finding the dog and you know we had a couple of singles or doubles. But then I decided on a brilliant place to put the dog. There was a, and please don't do this. Please don't play hide and go seek with your dog. Please don't, please don't let your kids do this. This isn't really a nice thing to do to animals. Um, but I was nine and I was devious and I did what little boys will do. I put the dog in the glass display cabinet. So there was a big tall cabinet with glass doors in the front that opened out like this and you could see through the glass doors. And I took all the stuff out of the cabinet and I put the dog in there in the stead. And I, I thought that was a brilliant place to put the dog. And apparently it was because my sister couldn't find the dog. And I caught to, 50 and she didn't find the dog and I got to 100 and she didn't find the dog and I got to 200 and she didn't find the dog. And I think it was somewhere around 350, 400, maybe 500 that our friends called us outside to play soccer baseball and we totally forgot about hide and go seek with the dog. So we left the dog up in the glass cabinet and we went out and played soccer baseball for like a half an hour. Well, after about a half an hour, I heard my mom screaming at the top of her lungs. Why is there a dog in the glass cabinet? How did the dog, <laughs> how did the dog get to the glass cabinet? Oh my God, how did that happen? And I think she even knocked something down while she was screaming and she just, she just kind of went crazy and worked herself up into a tizzy. And the reason I'm telling you this story is that all she would have had to do, now obviously we were going to be in trouble no matter what and we deserve to be in trouble, but in order to correct the situation, she didn't have to work herself up into a tizzy. Uh, all she had to do was open the glass doors pick up the sweet little dog and put the dog on the ground. And that would have been that. There was a very easy solution to the problem. But because to her, it was very shocking. She felt as if there was some mysterious force that, I don't know, maybe the aliens landed and put everybody's dogs in glass cabinets, or maybe there were very dangerous burglars in the neighborhood who were breaking into people's houses and putting the dog in a cabinet. I mean, could happen, right? So my mom got very frightened and worked up. And see, that's the thing. When people have a binge or they make a mistake with their eating or they overeat beyond their best judgment, even just a little bit, they're prone to believing that there's some mysterious force at work. They're prone to getting themselves all worked up into a tizzy and frightened that all these awful eating behaviors are going to continue without their, beyond their control, beyond their ability to um, take charge of the situation. And it's just not true. It's, not, it's just not true. There is never a time, um, even right in the middle of a binge, when you can't stop, take the dog out of the cabinet and put it back where it belongs. There's never a time you can't take your, your inner food demon and put it back where it belongs. I guarantee you that if you overate, that all that happened was there was some rationalization in your mind that you might not be conscious of at the moment, but if you go back and replay exactly what happened, you realize there was something that you said to yourself in the course of events just before you took that first bite of the thing that you weren't supposed to take a bite of that made it okay when it really wasn't okay. And okay, so you made a mistake. You're a human being, you were practicing a food plan, but now it's time for the big leads. So take, take the dog, take it out of the glass cabinets, put it back on the floor where it belongs, and just, just resume. The poison that you consumed and the um, toxic food that you had, even though it was pleasurable, it will get out of your system in a couple of days and along with it, your confidence will resume. Just open the glass case, take the dog and put it on the floor. Okay, uh, if you would like my personal help to stop overeating, stop binge eating and reprogram yourself to think like a permanently thin person on the food plan of your choice, please click the link in the description below to read more about how we do that and um, sign up for the program while there's room. 
And I want you to remember to subscribe to the channel because there's all sorts of additional tips and tricks and stories that'll help you to stop overeating and stop binge eating. Okay, I'll talk to you soon. Thanks.